I am, um, I'm from Zenity Corporation and we're GIS contractors here out of Golden. And I am joined by Andrew Cole, who is the program manager of one of my primary contracts and definitely my favorite contract, which is Go Code Colorado. And that's the um, major theme of our presentation today. And also joined by um, uh, Tyler from Cardo DB. Ooh, Cardo. Oh man, still, still in the transitionary phase in my brain. Um, <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. Um, so uh, Andrew's actually gonna kick us off here. So um, I think you wanna use the podium yeah. one? Yeah, all right, okay. uh, good morning. Uh, again, my name is Andrew and I'm an employee of the Secretary of State's office here in Colorado. We run a program called the Business Intelligence Center. Our goal is to make public data more easily accessible for business decision making. So just think open data for, for business. And uh, when we set out to run our program, um, uh, I'll get to the, the picture here in a minute, but um, I, I speak to uh, different audiences and I often say I kind of sit in between people who generate data and may not think that it would be valuable for other reasons and people on the outside who uh, would love to get their hands on data and no, don't understand why government doesn't make it available to them. Um, so when we first started out our program, uh, we have an open data platform here in Colorado called the Color Information Marketplace. It's at data.colorado.gov. Um, but we didn't have a lot of government agencies using it, and we have a very vibrant uh, startup and tech community here in Colorado, but a lot of those people didn't know that public data could be an asset, or if they thought it did, they didn't know who to ask uh, to get at it. And so uh, so Margaret and her team at Zenity actually uh, work on behalf of our office, and uh, we publish data for uh, all state agencies. It takes out that resource uh, question, you know, for agencies who may be willing to publish data um, but don't have the resources to do it. And then we run an app challenge called Go Code Colorado. And the reason I put up this uh, slide is because this is the uh, photo from, it's, it's a photo of the field from Field of Dreams. Uh, and for those of you who have not seen the movie, there's a famous line, if you build it, they will come. And I like to put it up uh, as a reminder that uh, the, I, when I talk to government audiences, I say, just because you make your data public, people won't use it. Um, but when I go to people who are end users of open data, I have to remind them, um, just because government has made it public, they assume you're gonna use it. And so it's gonna take some combination of the two. And so when we started out, like I said, we, we publish data uh, year round, but then we run an app challenge called Go Code Colorado. Um, the, we don't call it a hackathon because it's, uh, it's, a, it's bigger and more involved, but you can think of it in the concept of a hackathon. And, uh, and GoCode lives within this hopefully ongoing uh, circle where government agencies uh, spend scarce resources, and again, just a reminder for end users that resources are scarce everywhere, especially in the public sector. Um, if, they're gonna, if people are gonna make data public and do it in a meaningful way, um, they're giving up something to, to do that, so remember that. And then uh, really smart, creative uh, people on the outside, developers and entrepreneurs, in our sense, um, use, uh, use public data to build, uh, pu build business solutions. Um, but it's not just a one-time thing. Uh, it has to be an ongoing cycle. And I say that because um, we in government collect data for a specific reason, often regulatory, uh, you know, compliance related, could be process oriented. Uh, and we understand what the data means because that's what we collect it for. Well, the promise of open data is that it could mean something outside of that. Um, but it has to get outside of, outside of our mind and our perspective. But with that need to come all the understanding of the limitations, limitations on how the data is gathered, um, what the terms actually mean. I mean, you know, you would think that I, we, we spend a lot of time on metadata, but even really good field descriptions don't fully convey what a term may mean and how we collect the data. And so that needs to go out to the end users, um, but coming back in, and this is where you know, folks like you uh, come in is, please let us know how you're using the data. And if you heard me yesterday, I'm sorry that I keep harping on it, but if you're using public data and you've never told the government agency that makes it public, please do so. Like this week, go back, and sometimes it's hard to find who that is, but it, even if it's just, I use this data, thank you, please do that. Um, if it's, I use this data and I wish I knew, I wish I understood more about this, say that too. Um, sometimes the agencies aren't gonna be receptive to that idea, but sometimes they are. And there's usually uh, a champion within that agency, that government who took the time and energy and often capital to make data public. And what they would love more than nothing else is to have someone 
uh, from the outside say, I took your idea and I made something creative and new with it because that helps them. Um, so the challenge, uh, like I said real quick, uh, it's not a hackathon, it's a little bit more. Um, we put out specific business problems. Um, we, we do it so around the state. Colorado is a, a, a good sized state. We have what looks like a startup weekend uh, where teams come together, pitch their ideas. We take the 10 best. Um, we have a mentor weekend here in Boulder, which is uh, you know our uh, hotbed for startup and tech. Um, the three or the ten finalists uh, pitch the ideas. We give twenty five thousand dollars each uh, to the three winners to move forward with their idea. Um, real quick, I'll walk through a couple of examples. This is a an app called Beagle Score from year one, uh, and they are a site selection tool. So you type in a address, and they're gonna give you a score based on. Uh, five categories, taxes, infrastructure, neighborhood, competition, and regulation. And almost all the data underneath this is public. Some of it's private, which we think is great. Combining data is always better. Um, there's a view. And when you drill down, you're going to get, um, uh, again, all there, you're looking at there, almost all that's public. But the idea is a bakery owner isn't going to know where to go get all that. And so you know, we, we took a couple of smart developers uh, to put it in a consumable format. Uh, another example uh, from uh, last year's competition is uh, called Regulation Explorer. They put oil and gas uh, regulations on the map. Here in Colorado, we have some of the most stringent oil and gas uh, regulations, and almost all of it is based on a physical location. And so they took um, data like parcels, building footprints, uh, child care and nursing home facilities, wetland and hydrography, and road attributes. And uh, the goal was to uh, better facilitate with a community um, you know, what those regulations were so that the oil and gas, gas operators could, uh, could operate you know, more efficiently and better understand and make sure they're in compliance. But then within a community as well, the community could better understand uh, the makeup of their community and how it fits within regulations. Um, so uh, a couple of... Uh, a couple of examples. I'm going to hand it over to Margaret, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, the success of the program so far. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, we um, we had run the program for a number of years, and uh, it's, we're headed into our fifth year this year. Woohoo! Fifth year for Go Code, um, and uh, and we were largely measuring our progress and our success by our participation, which is great. You know, our impact on the community is a big part of what we're all about. But um, you know, we started looking once we we had a lot of data that we were collecting just about you know the teams and the data they were using, and so we decided to put it all together and build our own program metrics. Um, and so. Um, because data is the key, data combination is the key to adding value and making apps. Um, we have done a lot of work to try to, to do a wide variety of state data and really give people the opportunity to do that data combination. Um, and of course, we do encourage them to incorporate uh, private data as well. Um, so here's just a rundown. Um, and I am the data person on the team here so that you're, these are going to be the wordiest slides, of course, right? <laughs> so um, we've done 202 data sets. Um, we've worked with over 16 state agencies to get to these 202 data sets. Um, and, uh, um, sorry, um, and so we're working to build a state taxonomy of data sets that are relevant to solving business problems. So we go through um, a big arduous process of data sleuthing, trying to figure out what data is available. We profile and speculate on data sets until we're able to get a meeting with the agency themselves, and then we move them from uh, potential or possible data sets into identified and data sets that we're pursuing. And then we go through a ranking process um, to figure out uh, which ones we think are gonna be most relevant. Um, again, as Andrew said, it's all about um, doing the most that you can with limited resources you know, in government. So. Um, so uh, from that process, we think we've done a really good job of building variety over time. Um, and uh, you'll see that census pops up a couple times on here. And um, we, we know that demographic data is used a lot for businesses. And so just making that really accessible and having it subset to different, um, you know, the different geographic slices um, is something that we do for our competitors to save time. And, um, and really curating our data sets is, 
is what we're all about. You know, making sure, like Andrew said, we have good metadata so they understand it. Um, you know, being kind of the data liaison so that they have a point of contact to talk to. Um, and then also um, uh, making sure that it's machine readable, right? Like that's, it's gotta have an endpoint. Um, and, you know, we talked yesterday um, about how can we, you know, really facilitate an updated maintenance in the long run of, you know, government data into OSM. It's those endpoints that allow us to automate the update, right, that really take care of the technical part and then we just have to sort through all of the import uh, protocols on our side. But, um, you know, not too much on that. Um, so, um, so we have, you know, been working to curate all of the data. Um, and then we also look to see if there's creative ways that we can um, start to understand how people are using the data so that we can um, score the different teams based on um, how they're using the data in, their core, in the core functionality of their app. So you can see um, we've come up with basically four categories where starting at no data use where they, and in our, um, uh, we don't have data for the first year. This is for um, challenge weekend. And uh, so as Andrew said in the walkthrough, um, challenge weekend is we have a lot of different teams. And so we had 25 in uh, 2015, 34 in 2016, and 46. Sorry, that got messed up. Um, but you can see that we've moved um, to a metric of the teams improving their competitiveness and also us improving our message and, and really kind of hammering home what it means to add value to public data. And so by, t you know, by this year we had no teams without data use and so that was a really big win for us. Um, but increasing accessibility is kind of the base tier. Combining data sets um, to add value is the second. And then really producing that final analysis um, is the third tier, and then if you're doing all three, you're really kind of bringing it home. Um, so you can see as we're, we're moving teams, you know, and they're getting more competitive and the, and the program is evolving. So this is a really exciting um, metric for us to come up with. Um, so in addition to the taxonomy of data types, we're also starting to categorize the app types. Um, and so in the first two years, we had uh, constrained challenge statements. And you can see by the type of apps that people are fitting into categories like um, education and hiring, um, tourism, and we had traffic, um, and also the real estate, commercial real estate locator like Beagle Score that Andrew showed you in the previous slide. Um, and then in the uh, most recent two years, we have uh, been a little bit more open with the challenge statements. And so you can see that that really allowed our participants and competitors to maximize their creativity. And also a lot of them ended up bringing up their own industry knowledge to the table, which was very cool. Um, and so we got some really creative ideas from people just you know, being able to, to, to play around and bring their own knowledge. Um, and then also we, we think that you know, as we grow the catalog and building that variety, um, that's helping to diversify some of the ideas people are having. Um, uh, so those are our metrics, and um, Tyler's gonna take it away now with kind of the third component of the program, um, which is how um, public, private, and people partnerships um, make this all work. So when, uh, when Margaret approached me, when Aaron approached me to, to partner on, on Go Code Colorado, I was really excited. I'm from Colorado, I'm based in Brooklyn, so aside from the fact that I'm constantly looking for excuses to come back to this beautiful state, um, I really thought the approach to the competition and, and to the challenge itself was one that really set people up that participated in it to have long-term success. Um, so I'm a big supporter and I have been for a long time for public-private partnerships. People have different resources, agencies and institutions have their strengths and weaknesses. And so through partnerships, if you look at some of the most impactful programs and projects, it's usually done uh, in, in partnership with local communities and government and private sector. Um, and I think it's really important to emphasize the role that people play that might not be in the private or public sector necessarily. Uh, through their engagement in, in any certain initiative. Um, and that's certainly the case in this one. So creating these public-private partnerships where we put uh, people at the center and we build it on open data. 
And that's becoming easier and easier. As Aaron said, the data.colorado.gov site um, offers a, a wealth of information and data that, that people can use and leverage to actually build businesses and build companies and add value to their communities. And, and across the country and across the world, really, that's getting easier. I'm based in New York, and, and they have an open data law that they actually implemented in 2012, which mandates that government agencies must release all of their data by 2018, um, all legible data. And so now it's becoming the norm, right? Before, 10 years ago, it was something to pat yourself on the back, and now it's just becoming something that we should hold ourselves to. Um, and recently I was in Colombia where they're now opening up uh, their data for the first time. So you see cities in different areas. Um, and the common thing here is open data really does represent opportunity uh, for people and for organizations to, to achieve their, their goals. Um, and so the people in this partnership, in this challenge, created the, uh, the projects that, that we highlighted earlier, like Regulation Explorer, which identifies a need in their community a business opportunity and uses open data and maybe mixes private data with that as well. And that's part of the partnership, right? It's public private institutions and companies, but also public data and private data. So together that mix is, is quite powerful. Um, and so this year the winner was Magpie Supply. Um, and they developed a platform for small scale farmers to search and identify farmers market prices and locations. So this helps them create more profit and combat the cost of food transportation. So finding a very important need in their community, in a farming community, uh, where, where the economy really depends on this, using open data and, and really being the product of a partnership that creates the environment for them to, to innovate. So this is a completely different project, but I think it's also a really good example of what we can accomplish in partnerships. So this is the Global Forest Watch uh, which Carter, the company I work for, is a part of. Um, and this is a partnership with uh, Visuality, which is another company that uh, actually implemented the project. And there's all sorts of partnerships being represented here. So what we're seeing is uh, tree gain and tree loss over time across the world. And so you can imagine the amount of different countries and data sources and conservation groups that were involved in this. And this is one of those projects that will live on for a long time. And that's the case because of these uh, very solid partnerships. Um, and I think from a technology perspective, one thing that we can do to uh, facilitate these, these partnerships and these initiatives is create a technology that lowers the barrier of entry for people to participate. Um, so depending on, or regardless of your background or your technical skills, whether you're a developer, a coder, um, or an activist, we need to create tools that allow people to leverage the power of data and innovate new ideas um, very easily and very quickly. So we do this at Cardo. We try to make we try to automate processes, cut down the time that developers need to spend creating these platforms. So along those lines, I think technology companies really do have an important role to play uh, in enabling capable people to respond to market demands, as well as social and environmental needs with innovative solutions. Um, and this is supported and facilitated by local government. And of course, it's built on open data. Thank you, and I guess we can take questions. So, any questions? Um, you were talking about building a taxonomy for your public data. Is that, do you have any work available like on the internet that we can look at? Uh, it's not available online, but grab us and I'm happy to share it. Or, yeah, we'll, we'll be, it's a work in progress, but happy to share it. Sure. I participated in Go Code Colorado two years ago. And I thought that um, taking the public data and making it business oriented in a way took away from the project sometimes because I felt like some of the projects that went on were strictly marketing speak stuff. And with the school's data, I feel like 
you know, taking state data and feeding it back to the state could potentially be really powerful. For example, if you want to know where you should be building new schools, having the age of all these schools and knowing the number of children in these areas could be powerful for building tools like that. Yeah, it's definitely an understandable critique. Uh, our our office uh, is funded by business filing fees, so when we set out to do it, that was it was just a really obvious um, uh, kind of scope that we had to put on it. Um, I definitely believe, though, that in the in like I said, we have helped to make uh, public data available, and I really truly believe that in the process of making it available for people to use for business, um, we've hopefully made it available for people to use in a lot of other ways. So. Um, I understand the critique, though, for sure. Okay. Thank you all. All right, thanks, everyone. Um, 